Hi, calculus class. So this is your very first topic um, about calculus. We are going to learn today, today about topic one, which is the definition of a limit. So for an introduction, let's say we have the graph of y equals x squared. And we want to know what is the value of y, or f of x, appear to be approaching as x is approaching 2. So here is x equals 2 right here. Now the question is, is as we are getting closer and closer to this x value, what is the y value of the function getting closer to? So if I was to go up to the graph at x equals 2 and kind of zoom in on this area, I would look from both directions of the graph, from the left and the right, and see that the y value is approaching 4. And we call the x value that we are getting close to a, and whatever that y value or function value is, we call l. So we can say, as we move closer to x equals 2 on both sides of the curve, we see that the value of the function is approaching 4. So this leads into the definition of a limit. Well, the definition is if we can make the values of, of f of x as close to l as we like by taking values of x to be sufficiently close to a on either side of a, that meaning left and right, but not equal to a, we write the following. So the w way that you are going to see this the most is um, <clears throat> the limit as x approaches a from f of x equals l. This is how I typically write it and books and AP test. Some notation will be like this, and this is just f of x approaches l as x approaches a. So we have two different types of limits. The first one is what we call left-hand limits. The definition of a left-hand limit is if we can make the values of f of x as close to l as we like by taking values of x to be sufficiently close to a and x is less than a. So that means that I am getting closer and closer and closer to a from the left. These x values that are to the left of a are smaller than a. We write the limit as x approaches a from the left of f of x equals l. So this little symbol represents from the left, left hand side. Now we have right-handed limits. So this one is if we can make the values of f of x as close to l as we like by taking values of x to be sufficiently close to a, and x is greater than a. So that means as we are coming to the right side of a, these x values are bigger than a. And we're coming from the right on the graph. We write the limit as x approaches a from the right so we use a plus sign to represent from the right, of f of x is equal to l. Okay, so now we have what's called the left and right hand limit theorem. This theorem proves when a limit exists. So we know that a limit as x approaches a of some function will equal some value l if and only if the left hand limit as x approaches a equals l, and the right-hand limit of f of x as x approaches a equals l. So these, the left and the right, must be the same in order for us to say that the limit as x approaches a exists, and it will exist whatever value the left and the right approach. So this means that the limit of f of x as x approaches a is l only when both the left and right limits are also equal l. 
This leads into infinite limits. So we have uh, some function f defined on both sides of a, except possibly at a itself. So that means here's x equals a, and we have a graph that is going up a from the left and up a from the right. We say that the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals positive infinity. This means that the values of f of x can be made as positively large as we please by taking values of x sufficiently close to a, but not equal to a. So even though the function is not equaling specific value at x equals a, the function is approaching really, 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 really large numbers as we get really, 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 really close to x equals a and vice versa. So if you're going, the graph goes down from the left and down from the right, we would say that the function's approaching negative infinity. So this leads into a proper definition of vertical asymptotes. We say that the line x equals a is a is called a vertical asymptote of the curve y equals f of x if at least one of the following statements is true. So there's six different statements. Any one of these can mean that we have a vertical asymptote. So even though we did just say that in order for a limit to exist, the left and the right have to be the same, these can exist and they can be different, that's okay, but that means this would not exist. So if we were to look at this, we have the first one as x approaches from the left going towards positive infinity. So that would be this one. This would be a sample of that graph. Um, from the right, and that would be what this graph would look like if we had this limit. And from the left going down, that would be this one. And then right going down. So now we're going to try an example. I'm going to do only one of these with you. You are then going to try and complete the rest of them on your own and we'll check them in class the next day. So I wanna start with the limit as x approaches zero of f of x. So that means I'm gonna to go to x equals zero. Here it is. And I am going to look at x equals zero and I'm going to go to my graph and I'm going to come from the r left of it and I'm going to come from the right of it. And as I am getting closer and closer, the y value that I'm getting closer to is two. It does not matter that the actual y value is not two. It's what I'm getting really, really close to. So I would say that this limit is two. All right, so I want you now to try the rest of these on your own. See how you do. Remember to go to Edmodo, and if you have questions, ask questions. If you can answer someone's question, please do so. Thank you, and I hope this was enjoyable. See you tomorrow.